Today's video is all about insulin. Welcome to the fifth video of inpatient diabetes management. A link to the previous videos is provided below. Before we start, remember to sign up using the link below for PDF summaries of this video and future videos on our channel. In this video, we will discuss the following. A quick review of insulin release physiology, the difference between human insulin products and insulin analogs products, basal versus bolus insulin therapy, different insulin types used in clinical practice, how to display and write an insulin prescription and where to inject insulin and its effects on insulin absorption. Let's start. Insulin secretion in healthy individuals without diabetes is characterized by continuous basal secretions with peaks or boluses that occur soon after meals. Basal insulin secretion is the amount of insulin secreted in the fasting state in the absence of exogenous stimuli. And bolus insulin is the insulin used to control the postprandial rise in blood glucose level. In diabetes management with insulin, we simply try to mimic that by giving basal bolus insulin therapy. Basal insulin to control the blood sugar level overnight while fasting and between meals and bolus insulin to control the post meals rise in blood glucose level. Insulin can be produced through two distinct methods. The first involves synthesizing insulin molecules that are structurally identical to those naturally produced by the human body. This type of insulin is commonly referred to as human insulin. However, despite their similarity to endogenous insulin, human insulins do not exactly replicate the time to peak and duration of action of naturally produced insulin. Human regular insulin and NPH neutral protein hydrogen or isophane insulins are examples of human insulins. The second method of insulin production also involves creating molecules that are structurally similar to human insulin. However, in this case, genetic modification is used to alter the way the insulin insulin molecules interact with the body resulting in a more physiologic insulin profile. These modified insulin molecules are known as insulin analogs and examples of these analogs are insulin aspart, insulin lispro, insulin glulizine, insulin glargine, insulin detemir, and insulin diglodic. Because of their more physiologic profile, we always like to pick insulin analogs over human insulins, except in cases where IV insulin therapy is required. In this case, usually we use regular human insulin, which is the only insulin that can be given in IV. Insulin is also classified based on its use in clinical practice into bolus insulin and basal insulin. As we explained, bolus insulin is the insulin used to control the post meals rise in a blood glucose level, while basal insulin is the insulin that used to control the blood sugar values overnight while fasting and between meals. Let's start talking about bolus insulin first. To control post meals blood sugar values, bolus insulin needs to have a rapid onset of action and short duration of action and should be given before meals, whether as a scheduled before meals, AC bolus insulin therapy, or as needed correction sliding scale. All short acting insulins are considered bolus insulin, including human regular insulin and insulin analogs, insulin Lispro, Aspart, and insulin glulizine. Scheduled pre-meal short acting insulin should only be given to those who are eating with adequate oral intake. Our instruction should be that the patients and their nurses are to avoid administering the pre-meal bolus insulin therapy until the meal is physically present in the patient's room and to ensure that the patient consumes it. Now this is really important. Compared to insulin analogs, human regular insulin has a delayed onset of action resulting in a need to inject it at least 30 minutes before the meal to best cover for post-meal glycemic hyperglycemia, which is can be inconvenient for many diabetic patients. It also has a duration of action that exceeds the duration of the post-meal rise in glucose observed after most meals particularly meals that are not high in carbohydrates and fat. This can cause hypoglycemia several hours after eating, which can be prevented by providing a snack a couple of hours after the meal. That's why we always recommend using rapid acting insulin analogs over regular human insulin, except when IV insulin therapy is required as human regular insulin, as we mentioned, is the only insulin that can be given intravenously. In practice, IV insulin therapy is mainly used in two situations. First, when insulin drip therapy is required, like in DKA, non-ketotic hyperosmolar hyperglycemia, or critical hyperglycemia, mainly in critically ill patients, and 
in the treatment of acute hyperkalemia. Insulin analogs, on the other hand, Aspart, a brand name Novolog, Glulizine, brand name Apedra, and Lisprog, brand name Humalog, these insulin analogs are only given subcutaneously. They enter the bloodstream within minutes, so it's important to inject them within five to 10 minutes of eating. They have a peak action period of one to two hours and fade completely after about four hours. Now it's important to know that higher doses may last slightly longer but will last no more than five to six hours total. In clinical practice, rapid acting insulin analogs are used for mealtime bolus insulin therapy and for correction sliding scale. As we just mentioned, please use them over human regular insulin if IV insulin therapy is not required. Let's move to basal insulin. To control the blood sugar over Night, while fasting and between meals, basal insulin needs to have a slow absorption and long duration of action. And they are typically given once or twice daily based on their duration of action. And they require to be combined in most of the cases with rapid acting bolus insulin therapy to cover for the post meal rise in blood sugar. The available basal insulins are divided into intermediate acting, long acting, and the continuous subcutaneous insulin infusions or what we call insulin pumps. Intermediate acting insulin from its name, its duration of action is up to 12 hours and needs to be given in most cases twice daily. NPH, which is neutral protamine, hagidor or isophane insulin is the only one in this category. Basically here we bring the regular human insulin, we add a fish protein called protamine to it and when we add that, this will delay its absorption. This intermediate acting insulin is a cloudy suspension that needs to be remixed thoroughly before each injection. And because NPH is a suspension of different size crystals, it has a very unpredictable absorption rate and action. This can result in more frequent low and high blood sugars. That's why we highly recommend to use the new long acting insulin analogs instead if they are available and they are available in most hospitals. But it's important to know that NPH is not that bad. It's the only basal insulin that can be mixed with rapid acting insulin and wouldn't be more convenient for the patient if we give the basal and bolus insulin therapy in one injection instead of two. That's why pre-mixed insulin solutions were created. Now in the United States, premixed solutions are available in different forms. In pH and Lispro in 50 to 50 ratio or in uh, 75 of NPH to 25 uh, percent of uh, Lispro. Uh, also NPH is mixed with Aspart at 70-30 ratio, 70 NPH and 30 percent Aspart. Also available, uh, it's mixed with regular insulin 70-30, 70 percent NPH and 30 percent regular insulin. But despite this looking more convenient, this way it is preferred, still preferred to use long and short acting insulin separately given their more predictable and more reliable results. But still pre-mixed insulin solutions can be a good option for those who need a simple and straightforward treatment plan. Let's move to long acting insulins. These are insulin analogs that are absorbed slowly, have a minimal peak effect and have a stable plateau effect that lasts most of the day. They are given once or twice daily. These long acting insulin analogs include insulin detimer, insulin glargine and insulin diglotic. Insulin detimer brand name Levimir has a duration of action of 12 to 24 hours and is basically given twice daily for better coverage and optimal glycemic control. Insulin glargine has a duration of action of 24 hours. There are two types of glargine available in the market. Glargine U100 brand name is Lantus and also Bezaglar or Simgli and Glargine U300 brand name is Tohio. And let me take a second here to explain the U number here. U100 means that each one mil has 100 units of insulin. So the U300 means that each one mil has 300 units. So the number after the U tells you how many units in each one mil. Now the more concentrated the U300 form has a longer duration of action and is typically given once daily compared to the U100 which has a less duration of action and can be given once or twice daily. Now the conversion ratio between Glargine U100 and U300 is not exactly one to one. Patients typically require a 14% higher doses of U300 insulin Glargine to reach comparable effectiveness 
of the U100 insulin glargine. So if the patient, let's say, taking Elantas, a, U, uh, a glargine U100, taking 100 units of that, you will need 114 units of insulin glargine U3, U300. The conversion rate between the U100's um, Lantus and um, the other brand names, uh, Bazaglar or Simgli, is one to one. Now, how about insulin deglotic, brand name Treceba? Deglotic has the longest duration of action among all the FDA approved long acting insulin analogs with a duration of action almost more than 40 hours. It's given once daily. It's also available in U100 and U200. And the conversion here between the U200 and U100 is one to one. The U200 is mainly used in those with high insulin requirements. Let's move to the third type of basal insulin, which is the continuous subcutaneous Instantaneous insulin infusion or what we call insulin pumps. Insulin pumps are almost exclusively used in type 1 diabetics. They work similarly to pre-mixed insulin in some way. They provide basal and bolus insulin at the same time. They are filled with rapid acting insulin analogs and when delivered through an insulin pump, the rapid acting insulins provide basal insulin replacement, which we call the basal rate throughout the day, as well as meal time for high blood sugar correction. The the pumps provide a programmed basal continuous rate as I explained and an extra amount of insulin or bolus insulin with meals determined based on the carbs count which the patient has to do. So remember please do not switch off insulin pumps if the patient is in PO. Keep the basal rate. You may ask the patient to reduce the basal rate. Of course stop the bolus treatments. Now all hospitals carry human regular insulin because they need it for uh, IV for the insulin drip of course and typically they carry one type of short acting analog uh, insulin analog usually either aspart or lispro and one type of long acting insulin analog usually either glargine or ditimer and most hospitals carry NPH. Now in the description field you will find a link to a website to help you convert between different insulin formulations as a lot of patients take insulin formulations that are different from what is available at the hospital pharmacy. So make sure to look at that website. Human insulins are of course cheaper compared to insulin analogs and can be a good option for those without insurance or those with a large copay. Injectable insulin is available in pre-filled disposable insulin pins or reusable insulin pins with disposable insulin cartridge or in vials. Insulin pins are more of course more convenient to use than insulin vials with syringes because they combine the medication and syringe in one handy unit. Unlike syringes, pins comes preloaded with insulin including premixed insulin. And pins are fairly simple for use, for use but of course they are more expensive. Insulin syringes are available in 0.3, 0.5 and 1 mil sizes. The 0.3 mil syringe is useful if the insulin dose does not exceed 30 units but if you have large doses use the 1 mil syringe please. When using insulin pins or vials with syringes the shortest available needle is recommended. 4 to 5 millimeter for pin needles to avoid intramuscular injection and to minimize discomfort and tissue damage. And that brings me to writing a prescription. When writing an, an insulin prescription, make sure to specify whether a vial or pin, include the concentration, include the amount, and any needed needles and syringes. For example, if I want to order an insulin glargin pin, I will write it like that. And if I want to write for insulin vials, I will write it like that. Insulin can be injected into the abdominal wall, leg, arm, or buttocks. Human insulins are absorbed fastest from the abdominal wall and slowest from the leg and buttock and at intermediate rate from the arm. These differences can be useful clinically. For example, pre-meal regular human insulin should be rapidly absorbed and injection into the abdominal wall may be therefore be preferred. Rapid acting insulin absorption is increased if it's injected into an exercising limb due to increased blood flow. And also if you're giving, if you're giving a pre-evening meal of intermediate acting insulin NPH, it should be slowly absorbed to ensure a duration of action that lasts throughout the night. So it's prefer to inject it in the buttock or leg because we want a slow absorption. The absorption of the long-acting basal insulin analogs, glargine, uh, detimer, deglotic, do not appear to be significantly influenced by the injection size. In the end, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumb up, share it with your colleagues, and of course, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't, you don't miss any future videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.